What's up everybody, Andrew Mahoney here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really sweet deck that Jacob Chen and Preston Ellis played to 10th and 11th place finishes at the San Diego Regional Championships. This is the Persian GX Naganadel GX Whimsicott's Pidgey Conglomeration. This is a crazy deck and it is absolutely wild to see this thing in action. It has got a ton of different win conditions. It's even got the whole coughing and wheezing and some Roxy action going on in it. It's a really sweet deck to play. It is a lot of fun. It is definitely a deck that takes some getting used to as its win conditions are not always super apparent. You don't always do the same thing to win the game every time, but it is a very cool deck and has a lot of potential. I think the deck is uh, is very strong and very fun to play since there are so many different win conditions. Generally speaking, you're gonna be using Naganadel GX's Stinger GX to even the prizes. Uh, once your opponent has taken usually four or five prizes, depending on what you're playing against, then you're going to Stinger GX, both you and your opponent, to three prizes, and then try to take your final three prizes very quickly. A lot of times you will do this by softening up a tag team Pokemon, just kind of chipping away at it with the coughing and wheezing Roxy combo, or you can chip away at a Pokemon with Mew from Unbroken Bonds using Psy Power, or you can... Use Tapu Lele's Psy Wave. You can also use Tyrogue and Braddy Kick to place damage counters on whoever you want. If you're playing against a tag team Pokemon, usually you'll just try to chip away and put some damage on it, and then eventually reset stamp your opponent to one or two cards, and then go in with your Stinger GX, put you both to three prizes so that you don't lose the game when the Naganadel GX gets knocked out, and then you do the Shake and Bake play uh, you know, they'll knock out your Naganade LGX and then you knock out their tag team Pokemon GX for game. And you can take that final knockout with Persian GX's Vengeance, which can deal 190 damage if you have, uh, what, nine Pokemon in the discard pile, which is very easy to do since our primary draw is going to be Roxy. Once we get set up with our Pidgeotos, we use Pidgeotos Airmail to draw as well as Roxy. Uh, you could also use Island Challenge Amulet to limit the amount of prizes your opponent can take off of that Naganade LGX. Or if you're just trying to soften something up with Persian, you can also soften, you know, your opponent's tag team Pokemon up with Persian GX, uh, you know, during the middle of the game, which you can use Island Challenge Amulet so they only take one prize on your Persian GX. Oranguru's Resource Management gives you access to everything in your deck over again, which is really cool. You can even use that attack for free with the counter gain, which is in the deck, because you are going to be going behind in prizes. It can almost guarantee that. The fairy type Pokemon in this deck, as well as the fairy energy, are all very good against the dragon Pokemon that we see running around in standard format right now. Uh, we even have kind of an instant win condition with Alola Ninetales, though it is pretty difficult to get this thing up. Decks that it would be good against, like Garchomp and Giratina GX, right? can just use their linear attack to take out your ditto if you're unable to find your Mew and you know things like that. They could GG end your Mew, they could GG end your ditto when you put it down. There's a lot of things that they could do to prevent this Alolan Vulpix from ever seeing the night of day, the light of day, but the Alolan Nine, I, I said Vulpix, the Alolan Ninetales are still very good though. And uh, it does give you some instant win conditions against some decks. The Whimsicott GX with Energy Blow, also very good for beating decks like ADP, stuff like that, because Energy Blow can just deal a ton of damage at the end of the game and is good for, uh, you know, also just stalling turns as well. So the one of Whimsicott GX is pretty neat, and those are just stage one Pokemon that evolve from the Ditto. So we do have a lot of stock in the Ditto, but we do have Unbroken Bonds Mew to kind of prevent that Ditto from getting sniped, but GG End is kind of problematic for this deck because your opponent can get around your Unbroken Bonds Mew to eliminate something on a key turn. So bench management is very important for this deck because you're going to need to evolve up into things like your Naganade LGX on key turns. You're going to need to evolve into your Persian GX on key turns. You can also use Catwalk, which is pretty neat. Uh, I haven't really found myself using Catwalk a whole lot since you don't really let Pokemon GX just get knocked out like that, and you don't really put your Pokemon GX into play until the final turns of the game, but 
You may end up using Catwalk on the final turn of the game. Say, like, you have weakened your opponent's tag team Pokemon GX. You've reset stamped them to one. You've used your Stinger GX to put you both back to three prizes. And maybe you have a uh, an Island Challenge amulet on your active Naganadel GX, then maybe the Naganadel GX gets knocked out, you evolve into Persian GX, you use Catwalk, and then you go get the final Triple Acceleration Energy as well as the Great Catcher or whatever that you need in order to take game and three prizes. So like that's a you know general situation where you might use it. This deck is wild though. It really just makes more sense if you see it in practice. So I'm gonna cut on over to some gameplay from one of my streams. Uh, earlier in the week, make sure to check me out on twitch.tv slash tricky gym. If you have not already, drop the channel a follow so you can catch me live when I am streaming there. Also, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com as well as fullgripcodes.com, fullgripgames.com for all of your trading card game singles as well as fullgripcodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. And uh, yeah, enjoy the gameplay. By the uh, Christmas Story House. I don't think I'm not a big enough Christmas story fan. I like the movie and all, but surely there are there are bigger Christmas story fans who are more deserving of uh of having that. Mia says, "Yeah, but you have to live in Ohio." That's the caveat, right? You have to live in Ohio. Yes. That is the drawback <laughs> of the cheap houses that are here. But Full Grip Games is here. You feel me, though? Full Grip Games is here. And here's my rationale for living in Ohio. Because I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, I really love it there. My rationale for living here is that it's so affordable to live in Ohio that I can afford to travel wherever I want to go. And there is the Cleveland Airport. It's an international airport, so that does fly you know, pretty much anywhere you'd want to go or you could get to anywhere you need to go from the Cleveland International Airport. It's only a few hours to uh, to Canada from here. It's only a few hours down to, down to Maryland. It's only a few hours over to New York and it's only a few hours to go like, you know, west further if you want to go to Chicago or something. So I think that, hey, you got a nice little selection of things you could do. You could do a lot of traveling if you live here because the cost of living is so low. So the cool thing about living in Ohio is that, yes, if you have to live in Ohio, it's a little bit of a bummer, but you know, you get to pretty much do whatever you want because the cost of living is so low, which is nice. All right, we, we ain't got nothing going on here, chat. I uh, got nothing, nothing for you. All right, so we can bench this, I guess, and then I'm probably gonna start to get smacked around by linear attack, that's not good. Uh, like, starting a Ranguru now feels like an ultimate mistake. Like a real error. Uh, I guess I'll bench a couple of things just so I don't get, like, benched out real quick, but we'll pass. Chickenless Abyss, I am being very loose with a few. By few, I mean six. It takes six hours to drive to New York, six hours to drive to Maryland. But that's just a day, that's a day trip, right? I am being loose with few. I, by few, I'm not meaning three. But six, it's like a day. I should have said it's a day trip to New York. It's a day trip to uh, to Maryland. It's a day trip to Chicago. You know, it's a day trip. Yeah, day trip, you just do it real quick. Not like out and back, but like, you know, you go down in a day and then you still have, does day trip imply a round trip? I've done it. <laughs> done it. I've done it on like a... Uh, uh, a mega bus before. When I'm not driving, I've done it, you know. But yeah, no, not out and back. It's I don't know. What do you call it then? Six hours. It's just six, six hours. Ohio's very accessible. All right, you can get to pretty much anywhere you'd rather be. You could get to anywhere you'd rather be very efficiently from Ohio. Valero says, I drove across the country and back in eight days. Don't recommend it. Yikes. That's crazy. All right, we got a Pidgey now. Maybe I start to draw some cards. I think ideally my opponent just used Calamitous, Calamitous Slash and knocks out my Oranguru. Yeah, but they're smarter than that, so they're not gonna. Sad. 
okay. You know, I think the moment I put this Pidgey down, like, they're going to know what's up, and they're going to start targeting it. So, uh, it's, it's cool. It's part of the deal, right? So, we'll see what they do. Kalazid, I agree. Mega, mega buses are amazing. I mean, just being able to hop on one and just end up wherever you want to be. You don't have to drive. It's busted. And they're so affordable, too. All about the affordable travel. Most definitely. Let's see, they're going to rock surge, and we'll see what they end up doing here. I think, you know, my goal is to use Naganate LGX. We're going to try and Stinger GX so we can let them take, you know, prizes. That's fine. And then we need to Stinger GX, and then we need to try and knock one of these things out. So that is the main priority here. I think the Persian deck is a little bit too convoluted. I had decided I originally loved the idea of it, but it just gets rough all the time. Because, you know, opponents are kind of hip to what you're doing. They're going to try and play around your Stinger GX and stuff. They're going to try and take out your, like, if I bench Ditto Prism Star, it's not living through the turn. We know that. So let's see. They're going to linear attack. They got their Blacephalon down. So maybe they plan on going in with that. That is also really bad for me. Because if I, you know, set us both to three prizes, they can Let's see maybe i just get out the tyrogue and just start swinging what do you think about that just letting this pidgey go down no 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 no. we need to actually see some cards i get to see two cards deeper they are going to kill the pidgey but i guess i will bench the mew so that does give them like a wasted turn of doing that so we'll airmail get ourselves another pidgey and then i'll bench the mew yes it does archer i just was sleeping on that real quick but it's cool we could actually start resource managing, but I don't actually think that I want to do that with the counter gain. I think we'd rather just bench this, and then we can, uh, we can pass. But they might GG end my Mew. That would be a little bit disastrous. I do have Alana's Fishing Rod, but at least it buys me one more turn of using the Pidgeotto. Real Slim Sadie says, here's to hoping NAIC is in Ohio again. Yes. For sure. I know, peeps, man. I know I could resource management, but there's no point. I mean, all I got is one, a single Pokecom in my discard file. It's like probably not worth it. I think I'd rather not. So, that's a little bit concerning. Baby Blacephalon, man. He's out here. He's ready to go. There he is. Right there. So, I mean, he can even just load up the Baby Blacephalon and just get it to a point where it's uh, it's kind of ready to go as soon as I use my attack. I guess the hope is as long as my opponent, you know, can't take three prizes, but they're probably going to be in a spot where they could take at least, like, two So that's tough. We'll see what they do to build up their board position. I probably need to try and clear this Meowth out of here as well. Just because it's it's kind of not helping my case with 40 damage on it. I think I'd rather, you know, just try to Catterday. Just draw a couple cards. Seems good. And then I'll start using Jirachi later. But I think I'm going to give up this Meowth. There's a Fairy Energy right there. So that's good. Well, Airmail. We got a Lecture. I think the lecture is good. Yeah. It seems better than the Pokecom right now. And then I can lecture. Get ourselves another Pidgeotto. Tyrogue. And maybe another Coughing. I 
do not have Ditto Prism Star in the deck. Which is sick. Gotta love that. Eventually, I'm gonna have to bench, like, Poiples and stuff. I don't know if I'm quite there yet, but that is something that I have to look out for as well. And do I have another Meowth in the deck? I do. So, that's fine. And we're, good to, we're gonna get to airmail one more time. We got another Pokecom, so that's cool. And then, you know, it's not time to Tyrogue. Maybe I want to bench a Poiple. Maybe I want to... Nah, I got plenty of time. We got time on our hands. So I think I'm just going to Catterday, draw some cards. And let this thing get knocked out. Since it does have 40 damage on it, it's a little bit of a liability. Um, having this Meowth on the bench just because it has 40 damage on it. So when they do go to Fireworks Bomb or whatever, I need to make sure that... Yeah, the fireworks bomb is only taking two prizes max, so that then I have a chance to potentially kind of pounce on a Garchomp Giratina for game. And we're trying to just set up this, you know, checkmate board state. And one of the toughest things about attempting to do this is the fact that they can just GG end whatever they want. So I need to give myself plenty of bench space is the thing. So, I don't think I need to Fishing Rod yet. We're going to try and draw a couple cards. Another Pokecom and a Ninetales. It's fine. Or Airmail one more time. Skateboard and a Great Catcher. I think I would love to hang on to this Jirachi if I can. So, let's Stellar Wish. And we got a Reset Stamp. It's pretty nice. So we can get stamped to four. It's better than what they're rocking with right now. I think we'd rather stamp... I mean, because eventually they'll stamp me. Which is kind of troubling. Now, I can go, you know, bench two meaningful things and pass. I think I probably will bench one meaningful thing. Like, we'll put a Poiple down. Oh my gosh, if they GG in that Poiple, though, I mean, that's just, like, really brutal. Hmm. I don't think it's necessarily time to put that Poiple down, then. I mean, because if they GG in that Poiple, it's, like, game over. So, I mean, not really. I have the fishing rod in my hand, but that is kind of tough. Now we're just going to retreat here. I think I hang on to everything else. We're just going to try and bratty kick. Tails. Dang. Samzilla. I was thinking that we have to try and use the Persian. I think. But in order to do that, I have to get a decent chunk of damage on this. Which is not something that I have right now. So I'm going to need to at least Roxy a couple of times. And... Oh! Oh! This is mildly problematic. Okay. So now they can snipe and actually KO a Pidgeotto. That's brutal. Hmm. Also, throwing the Blacephalon early, though, does... Hmm. I guess this is kind of ideal for them because then they can uh, they can start sniping. I don't have an attacker built up. So they get to just like bop a Pidgeotto. Uh, I do have a couple of turns before I have to use my GX. I mean, if I could KO this thing before I GX, I mean, that would be insane. But I don't think that I really have that because I just, you know, I got the Meowth right here. And they could always just retreat this into the Giratina. Hmm. So... That's fine. Probably have to bench me out now. They've kind of put that pressure on us. So we have to do that. And then... 
Tate and Liza might be our best bet as far as drawing cards go, because this Pidgeotto is about to go down. Pidgeotto goes down, I mean, it's kind of brutal. After Pokecom, probably it's time we set up the Poiple 2. We like have to do both these things. It's kind of getting into the end stage of the game. I, like have to put both these down. And try to give myself the best out at having some things. We're gonna shuffle draw five. We got an amulet and a Roxy. So we're gonna airmail one more time. We got the triple and a wheezing. Um I think taking the wheezing. And then I'm going to retreat into Jirachi, Stellar Wish. And we've got another Roxy and an, a Lecture. Hmm. I think the Roxies are good. Just to give us some explosive draw when our Pidgeotto gets taken out. Now we're going to attempt a Bratty Kick again. Probably have to just Bratty Kick of nothing. I don't think that I've ever hit a bratty kick. I don't know. Remind me of a time that I have ever hit a bratty kick. <laughs> it's not at all. Yo, did you guys play Sword and Shield? Tyrogue just bombards you completely when you're playing that game. Sneasel too. I love Sneasel. Oh my gosh. I mean, Sneasel and Sword and Shield is amazing. You're just like running around and then Sneasel just comes and like Naruto runs at you, which is hilarious. All right, so they did decide to GG end. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. That could have been worse. For sure. So, at this and they got their energy off the Blacephalon, which I like. So I think we're going to airmail. Lecture. Persian GX. I mean, I think we just take the Pokemon. And then we're going to Pokemon Communicate away the Mimikyu, probably. Yeah, I don't need that. For coughing. And we're kind of desperately looking for... I could Tapu Lele. I could, like, hit this thing. I just think it's got four energy on it. We could just hit it with Tapu Lele. I certainly could. Um, we'll get the coughing first. Um, no, we're gonna live a little. All right, and then Roxy discard the wheezing, and the Pidgey, and see some more cards. I did get a fairy energy. And we're gonna Stellar Wish. I got Reset Stamp. So I think we're gonna Stamp and just hit with potentially Persian GX with an Amulet. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I think we go in with this. We just side wave out of nowhere. Yeah, that seems good. And we're gonna stamp. And then try to put some pressure on this like single Giratina. And see what we can do. Uh, I may actually just like not do the shake a big play this game. I and mean, we're gonna see how it goes. It's 160 damage right there. And then we're going to see if maybe we could just finish it off with Persian GX. And maybe they don't actually have anything. You know, hoping that the stamps just kind of stick here. And then next turn, you know, we can use our Persian. It looks like they're going to try it. Like, I don't plan on, like, I think I'm going to, I want to try and win without Stinger GXing. So check this out. <clears throat> because then they won't really get to do much with this. 
I have another stamp. Yeah, this is amazing. So we just are gonna airmail, take the fishing rod, I guess. Seems good, and then I can Roxy, discard Mimikyu, and Jirachi just to see more cards. Sure. Okay. And then we can take a knockout on this active with our Persian GX. I think it's not worth using the amulet yet, though that that is like an idea that I could use. <clears throat> Stellar Wish. We have Faba. Faba is probably good. And then, yes, I think we're just going to neutralize this threat. That or I, yeah, I can't, I can't get myself the, the poi pull this turn. So I think we are just going to have to take this knockout. Yeah, we're doing that. Here's this. And I can either Vengeance or Slashback. I feel like we might as well just Vengeance, right? Slashback does put it to the bench. Gives me the option to use Tarachi, which is cool. So I kind of like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I mean, so yeah, we're doing like the full 180 damage or whatever. Uh, I think we're going to live a little. Just slash back GX. All right, we're going for it. I'm going to switch into Jirachi. So this next turn, we are... I think we're looking at trying to win this game... Like, they're going to go to one. Then I'm going to stamp them to one. And then I can knock out the Blacephalon. Then I have to knock out this Mistrevious for a game. So if they use Mistrevious, it looks like that they're that's what they're doing. So if they use the Mistrevious, all I have to do is attack with Persian GX for a game. But they're probably going to try and stamp me to two or one. They're going to try and stamp me to one and knock out my Pidgeotto, which is rough for sure however I have a pretty good game plan um, I mean in that I could I can kind of just throw Persian all I have to do is get a knockout with Persian that's it all I need is a triple so that's pretty good and I can use Tyrogue. I mean, I if I hit, what, three Tyrogues in a row? Four Tyrogues? I mean, that's that's way too much. But it's an option. And we're just going to be attempting to get ourselves the triple acceleration energy. Here's the stamp to one. Can we do it? Triple. Give me the triple. That ain't it. And they're not attacking. <laughs> they ain't got it. Okay, so we get to Stellar Wish. And I get to Airmail. Oh my gosh, insane. We've done it, folks. There it is. GG's, chat. We did the unthinkable. We beat the Garchomp Giratina deck with our Persian deck. And we didn't even use the GX attack. Insane deck. See what we can do. That was the the game against Tina Chomp was the first time that I ever really uh, I think found some sort of alternative win condition. Again, you know, alternative win condition with the Persian deck. Uh it's it's certainly interesting and I, I think it's fun to play, even if it doesn't win that often. Because you're kind of just like looking for these really alternative win conditions all the time. You're looking for these uh, different routes and lines of play, which is it's, a, it's the reason why I really like the Garchomp Giratina deck as well. Because it's not just the most straightforward deck. In fact, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty much the opposite of that. So I think Meowth here is the ideal starter. It can use Caterday. So we'll do that. 
and then we got a lecture turn one. So this is just a good opening hand, which is not something that we've been seeing too much here with the old Persian deck. And sure enough, we were playing against a Molga. This should be a pretty good matchup, I think, right? That we can just theoretically, if we, um, you know, we spread enough, I guess, that should be just free. I think we just try to set up a, you know, if we could just Orangaroo the guys back into the deck, should be pretty bonkers. So let's see, we got two coughing in the deck, which is good. And my Weezing's in the deck, which is also good. So we're gonna get two Pidgeys. I already have a Pidgeotto. I could just get another Pidgeotto and then we'll get turn two, two Pidgeottos going. That seems pretty rock and roll. So I'm into it. Um, or we could go, yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Because I want to start drawing as aggressively as possible. The Ditto Prism Star, I mean, I guess they can like ping things on my bench. The Ditto give me an option to maybe get a third Pidgeotto in play. I don't think that there's anything that, yeah, we'll go for it, sure. I'm just, like, I'm trying to think, is there anything that the Ditto is really going to be useful for in this matchup? I mean, Whimsicott GX, no, not really. Alola Ninetales, no, not really. So I think our primary strategy is going to be to spread a lot. I can use this to win the game, that's for sure. We could go Tapu Lele, Magical Swap, and... Um, and just take three prizes that way. I think that's actually our win condition, now that I'm thinking about it. So, we just want to spread a couple of times with the Roxy coughing, wheezing. And, you know, if we put 30 damage on everybody, all I have to do is put, you know, a little bit of that damage around on the Amolgas. So I think so long as we can draw explosively we should be able to win the game because this deck does not play a lot of reset stamps either so that's good and then we are probably going to need to stinger gx so we could use the ditto to stinger gx or just a poipo or whatever it doesn't really matter and then i'll just use the meowth to potentially catterday or something just draw some draw some cards though we do need to save a fairy energy for the magical swap at the end of the game also, since Tapu Lele does have 110 hit points, we don't really need to worry about it getting KO'd by their Dedenne, which they have, which can max out at a snipe of 60. So the Dedenne can, there it is, the Dedenne can ping like a Pidgey on the bench. So I am going to probably want the Mew in play. Uh, the Mew is also another good option for us to be able to stop well, exactly this. Okay, so they're just going to go in turn one. They do not like this ditto. Guarantee the ditto is going down. There's the ditto. All right. So they went in with the turn one. <laughs> turn one nuzzle. No generator, huh? That's fine. I didn't need that ditto anyway. Rest in peace, ditto. So now we are looking for the Mew from Unbroken Bonds for sure. Um, I guess we Tate and Liza. Then our AML twice and look for a lecture, but I'm already down a lecture. I feel like we don't need to reveal that Tapu Lele yet. Yeah, so let's just do that. We're going to shuffle draw five. Let's see what we can find. Oh, geez. All right, airmail a couple times looking for a Pokecom. That ain't it. Let's see. Yeah, the fairy energy I think is ideal. And then airmail again. There's a Pokecom. Beautiful. So I don't get smoked. So long as the Duderson is in our deck, we're gonna see where you at. Hey. Just in time there, Mew. Excellent. And 
We could just go here and Catterday, draw a couple cards. I like that. They're not really in a position to knock out my Meowth either. So, you know, I get to Catterday next turn too, which is really good. And then I could potentially retreat in resource management. After I use this Roxy coming up, I'm going to airmail a couple times. Roxy spread to some of their guys. I can use Orangaroo resource management, throw the energy back into the deck as well as the coughing. I might just be able to win with just that strategy, especially since, I mean, I don't know. They didn't use turn one Padre Sue, but we'll see. I mean, their damage is going to rack up pretty quick. They'll snuggly generator this turn, assuming that, yeah, retreat, have the energy. And then they're going to have a board with like six lightning in it on it or something like that so they're going to be ready to one hit ko just about anybody that i put into play which is fine i mean i've got like a four turn clock before they're down to one prize and that's just you know i need to use the stinger gx by then uh they also only have one bench spot for raichu that's a little bit tough for them, uh, especially since I'm not going to be taking knockouts, right? Like, I'm not... I'm, I'm going to lock their board to this for the rest of the game. And we're just going to spread with Roxy um, until, until that game-ending scenario. So let's see if we can get it done. Yo, we top-decked the coughing like a boss. And we got the Escape board. And Faba, I don't think the Faba matters. The board is better. I'll take that. Airmail one more time. The Pidge and the Fairy Energy. I feel like at this point, the Fairy Energy is just stronger. Those are all three of our Fairy Energy in the deck. And then I'll Roxy and discard Double Coughing. We're going to do 10 to everybody. That is awesome. And we got the Pokecom too. So I can just go straight. Oh, actually, the Rangaroo is right here. I just go straight in with a ring root. Let me just toss those dudes right back in the deck. Love it. And then next turn I can you know rearrange the order of my deck with that. So I do like that. I think we're just going to go in with the Orangaroo. Uh they can't ghost anybody up. Which is good. I'm just trying to think if there's I think the board is probably good to save. Uh, we're actually just going to retreat this back into the Orangaroo. And we can put the energy back in the deck as well, so I like that. And then I think that, what, this Mew should like never go down, so we could just keep that as a free retreater potentially. I think I'll save the board, though. I don't really need to do that yet. So let's just resource management. We're going to throw in the two Coughings and the Roxy back in. Oh, no, the two Coughings in the... Fairy Energy back into the deck. And then if they knock out my Orangaroo, I now should have three <clears throat> uh, Garb Coal. It's so that you can get it off of the Elm's Lecture. That's why we play Coughing over Wheezing. You don't want to start Coughing. I mean, that for sure is not ideal. But with the three copies of the <clears throat> the three copies of the dudes in the deck. I mean, we've got the two coughings and the wheezing. We should be able to Roxy two more times, theoretically, and we could just win with Psy Power on three Amolgas, <clears throat> which would be pretty sick. We'll see what this next turn kind of brings. I could also just, you know, manually attach twice to the Tapu Lele and just go in like that. I know we do play counter gain, so that's also a possibility and I don't think I'm ever going to be able to take six prizes but we're just going to use the Stinger GX and then probably just a magical swap is just a fine thing to rely on to get those final prizes I just want to Roxy one more time and get all these guys a little bit squishier a little bit softer so we'll see what we're going to do probably just say like the Mew is fine choice to wear the escape board. I don't think this Mew is ever going down. So we'll just do that. Yeah, I guess I'll choose that at the end of the turn, but I think that seems right. And airmail, there's a triple. 
Triple. There it is. All right. And then we're going to airmail again. Jirachi and Persian GX. Not a lot of exciting stuff going on there. Probably just Jirachi. Seems fine. And then no supporters. Hmm. We can't Psy Power, because then that opens up the door for them to Dedenne. So I think we're just going to sacrifice a Jirachi. Just retreat. Dig another card. They'll have to knock it out. There's a Roxy there. They also got the Lana's Fishing Rod. Cool. So I think we're going to take the Roxy. And then next turn, we just want to find like a couple coffings or something like that. And then we're just going to pass again. There's really no point in using the stamp yet. I feel like I'll just do that at the end of the game. I'm not really trying to get stamped myself since I'm trying to like put together this nice hand that's perfect and has all the answers that I need. So that is one of the hardest parts about playing this deck is that you're constantly trying to kind of craft your hand to have just the right thing to make like just the right play and then your opponent's like reset stamp and you're like, oh God. Yeah, it's uh, here we go, yep. Brutal. See, like this is not what I bargained for here. My other hand was way better. So we do get to airmail a couple of times though, and if I can find, you know, even just one coughing, then I'm pretty confident about it, because then I can comp for the other one. So glad I put the escape board down, just gives me free retreat, so that's nice. We got two comps, so we're guaranteed two coughings, which is awesome. And my opponent probably does not play too many reset stamp. I mean maybe I don't know. Early versions of the list, like the version of the list that I saw on Pablo's channel, I think he played like three reset stamps. So that is a thing. I'm going to trade in the Whimsicott for technically the Weezing is like less searchable than the Coughing, so we should probably get that out of the way. And then we can trade in this Alola Ninetales as well for the other Coughing. And then we're just going to Roxy. And we get to draw a lot of cards. So that's cool. Love that. My opponent's giving me the broken heart. I know. I know. It's a sad, slow death. <clears throat> but sorry, you're going to have to endure it. It's just what our deck do. Yeah. This is like the closest thing to a wheezing spread deck. <laughs> I think that we can, uh, we can play. All right, I got the Nag GX. I think we might as well you know, throw up the Meowth and let that get knocked out. Yeah, because I don't want to bench this Tapu Lele. I mean, am I at a spot where I can, you know, almost, almost, almost. Yeah, we're going to throw up the Meowth. And then I think I want one more Pidgey down. And I'm going to pass. Okay. So, we are going to have to bench the Tapu Lele and put a Fairy Energy onto it. Because I think I'm down my, yeah, I'm down my Tate and Eliza, and there's not actually a good way to retreat uh, the Nagonade LGX once I use Stinger GX. It's got to retreat a 1. I think my board is here, so not a lot of options there. To retreat, so I think I'm going to have to preemptively put an energy onto my Tapu Lele in order to be able to magical swap. It's kind of like my thought. Drag for Life says, "How is Pika Judge not really good right now?" Um, they're passing. Okay. Interesting. Pika Judge. Uh, I was never a big fan of Pika Judge. I think, I just really like, I don't know. I think it's okay. I, I've just never been a huge fan of the deck. I, I really loved Let Loose Picaron. That was cool, because I liked being able to use like Volkner and Let Loose in the same turn. Um, but I feel like Pika Judge probably really heavily relies on Dedenne. And Dedenne is just such a huge liability in this format. 
That's why I'm not. And then like Pika Judge also plays Power Plant. So I feel like Pika Judge is trying to do all these things and it's not really great at any of them. It's not really like a great, you know, uh, like disruption deck. It's not really a great aggressive deck. <clears throat> I feel like it's just like too much walking that middle line. I think I would rather just play Pika Ron without the Denny's. All right, so we got some reset stamps now. <clears throat> Not exactly sure what they're building up for. Do I have another board in the deck? I don't know. I only have 19 cards left in the deck, so uh, we'll see. They can't pass forever, right? I think at this point, um, I can theoretically win with a Psy Power. They have, no, not win, but I could go, I could go down to one prize remaining with a Psy Power. Um, because I do have, um, I do have, what, one coughing in deck, which is right here. And then I have a fishing rod that we can use. Airmail, there's Persian GX. There's Pokecom. So I think I kind of want to take a look in the deck with Pokecom and see if there's any way that I could switch this. I don't know, the Roxy is good too. Because I want to see if I could switch this Meowth, since he's not taking it out. Hmm. We'll take a look with Pokegum. And then I'll airmail one more time. There's a triple. So. Oh, let's take a look in the deck. My opponent is not making this super easy. I think we actually might as well lecture. I don't have another supporter in my hand that I'm going to use, so we're just going to lecture and take a look at the deck. There's Pidgey. All right, as I thought, we don't actually have a switch card. So we can evolve into Persian GX and I can actually just, you know, slash back GX. And what's hilarious is they can't actually take a knockout if I do that. So it's a nice little switch out I have. And then that would allow me to win the game. I think we're going to do that. See, I could Vengeance. If I slash back GX, then I'm like retreating with triples. I mean, then I'm like, I'm off of the, the GX strategy. So I think, what, we could stamp. I take that thing out. Alternatively, I just retreat the fairy. I don't think that I saw my counter gain in there. So the counter gain's not in the deck, so the Tapu Lele strategy is not actually very easy to use, and I only have two fairy energies left because I have one in the discard pile already. So I kind of need to... I, that or I evolve into Persian and retreat, but I think I would rather just take this knockout. And then... like slash back into Pidgeotto or something. I think that's fine. Yeah, it's like kind of weird, but it felt good at the time. With Poipal active, I could theoretically retreat it for free, so I think that's optimal. So we're going to go there. Yeah, I guess we could go into Mew. The Poipal seems okay. So long as the Naganadel is in the deck, I could charge up and retreat it. Yeah, Daniel Davis, I think that's probably correct because it's got the escape board too, so it could, even if they nuzzle stall, like it would be able to retreat. And then the goal is going to be to win the game, to win with Psy Power. And we're going to 
try and Roxy away the coughing. Uh, that's a little bit tough. I do have three airmails to help me get there. But we're going to see what we can do. I just have to side power, you know, the 70 hit point things. And then the Roxy should be able to take care of the three Amolgas. And he missed, so that's good for us. Let's airmail a few times and see what we could do. I need to find the Roxy now. So I did already, I, I switched up the ordering of my deck, so I do have a decent shot of being able to find the Roxy. So let's go there. Uh, we'll grab this. Airmail again. There's the Roxy. Oh, and the Lanas. That's fine. I'm going to switch up the order of the Lanas with this Pokecom. No, the Pokecom. Mm, yeah, it's fine. I think it was technically correct to take the Lanas first. But it's fine. Could trade this in, and I just want the Naginadel so it can retreat. And then we get the airmail again. Yo, never punish, chat. Let's go. So we've got that. I can Lana's and put the coughing back into the deck. And then we can just Elms for it. And then in order to win the game, see if I, if I retreat, if I charging up and retreat into Mew right now, I could Psy Power, the Dedenne, the Patchy, and the Pikachu. And then next turn, I'm set up to Roxy three things and take a knockout with Persian. So I think that's ideal. I think that's actually the wave. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. And I'm going to Psy Power. We're going to go one, two, three. And then next turn, if they bring up this Pikachu to knock me out, then I win the game with Roxy and Persian GX. That's the <laughs> that's the play, chat. That is the play. You feel me? Let's go. So that's uh, I think that's it. They take a knockout on my Mew. We promote the Persian. We knock out the Raichu, and I Roxy everything on their board. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do just win with Roxy, but I want to knock out the Raichu, too. But I, I won't be able to because I'm going to take five prizes on, the, on, the, uh, on these guys. So that's good. Cool. We've got it, chat. Roxy double coughing. I know. My opponent's got the broken heart. Well played. Yes, don't don't quit. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let's go. One more, one more, one more. I'm down for one more round. And he's dead. Yo, let me take the prize. Yo, I get to take all the prizes. Please let it happen. Another one. <laughs> and another one. Yo, we got two more. Let's go. Insane deck. Look at this big old hand, too. Absolutely gnarly. Yo, thanks for being a good sport there, opponent. I wanted to see it happen. There we go. Look at that. Coughing is the MVP. Never thought I'd see the day with 540 damage dealt. Insane deck.